Okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good to see you. A week has gone by quite fast, isn't it? It feels like I finished my class yesterday. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, let's do a quick recap of chapter three. Uh, it was all about government and structures. Um, what do you remember from last class? Okay, let's just uh, pass on the mics, okay? Can uh, someone be in the middle and just pass the mic on um, so the audience online also benefits from your answers? First, uh, they started the church. Yeah. Uh, after the church, there is an emergency for uh, deacons for there to help. Okay. And All right, the so there's an emergence of uh, deacons. Uh, okay, what's the Greek word for deacons? Yeah. Are you saying or asking? <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> Diakonos? Diakonos? What do you think? Diakonos? Okay, yes. All right. So we saw, we see the emergence of deacons. Uh, so what is the meaning of that word diakonos? To help assist, serve. Okay, so that's the emergence of deacons. We see that happening in which chapter of the Acts? Chapter 6, okay. All right, then what else do we see happening? What else did we learn in the last class? So deacons are also can engage in the spiritual ministry. Deacons can also, were also encouraged in this in the spiritual ministry as well okay, not just the administrative part but also the spiritual ministry uh, what sorry after we saw the elders engagement after we yeah after that we see the elders also being added okay the emergence of elders uh, but so mike right deacons going and uh, building new churches right yeah, planting churches uh, going out in mission trips okay but what were the uh, some of the criteria that uh, that were required of the deacons uh, they have to be filled with the spirit of god they should have faith yeah in page 17 in your pdf or page 25 in your textbook so it says honest report that means their reputation uh, yeah like in other words on and off the stage has has to be consistent with who they are um, full of the Holy Spirit, full of wisdom, uh, took responsibility for daily distribution of the food. Okay, that means they were responsible, accountable, whatnot. Okay, so they were encouraged in spiritual ministry as well, not just administrative part. Okay, uh, new churches were raised uh, because of them, and we see the emergence of elders uh, later on in Acts chapter 14 onwards. Uh, so I give a very basic definition of what an elder is, right? They can be a new Christian, but an but elder at age, right? An old, advanced in age. So hence, the word elder or the title elder. Okay, and then later on we see that churches in different places moved from multiple leaders to eventually being uh, head by one leader, right? That hence the word we get the presbyter or presbyt. You know, we get it simply means uh, presbyteros. It simply means bishop or to shepherd or to pastor. Okay, so. That means a church can have multiple leaders. That means they can have many deacon board members. Uh, they can even have elders uh, who give counsel and advice and whatnot. But eventually, uh, the decision would lay on the bishop, right? One leader who would oversee. Um, so those were all, and we saw different systems that, uh, yeah, the clerical system and all these different yeah, clergy system. Or how a church can function basically right a different network of churches they function very differently your church back home will function very differently um etc etc okay so that's what we looked at chapter three is the structures and the systems okay francis all right uh so let's move on to chapter four uh that's, that's the stages of growth and development okay stages of growth and development which page are we on 
Okay, in your hard copy, page 41, page 28 in your PDF. So in this chapter, to give a very quick overview, we'll look at uh, what are the different stages that a uh, church needs to function or to progress in order to grow. And we'll look at a couple of case studies as well. Okay, uh, But very quickly, amongst us, uh, please use the mic if you have to respond. Again, it's for the benefit of everybody online and also the uh, e-learning students. So when you think of the word growth, Right? Growth. Huh? Yeah, growth. What comes to your mind? What is... To be developed. Mike, 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 Mike. To be developed in certain things. To be developed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Growth. Okay. Nina says... Growing to maturity. Growing to maturity. Okay. Growing to maturity. Okay. okay. So, yeah, so changing like uh, how before... Uh, like we can say, uh, everything is changing. Like how before, before and now it's like it's different. different. So there's a change with growth. Okay, stages of uh, Jatran says stages of development in a person. Stages of development. So develop. That means there's some sort of uh, progress. Develop. Okay. When I was in school, um, they used to teach that India is a developing country. That means it's a uh, present continuous. And uh, I'm not saying anything after that. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that's what it's, 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 it's the progress, progressing, right? It's present continuous, developing, all right? It's not developed. Um, so, it's, so that means there's a sense of progress, right? Uh, it gives you a sense of progress. So, Justin says stages of development. Okay. That means the stages of growth or progress. Okay. What else? Uh, before. I have done a study in Hindi. Hmm. Now I'm doing in English. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're learning, uh, let's say, okay, that, that comes under a different skill set. So you, you're learning a different skill, for example, right? So, uh, yeah, okay. Again, I'm not sure if this happens nowadays, but then during my time in summer holidays, uh two months of summer vacation you had to go and learn a new skill like okay go for typewriting classes shorthand classes um it ha used to happen in my days okay uh, <laughs> uh along with playing and whatnot so yeah developing a new skill set shows growth isn't it um so in this day and age you have to kind of grow every day or every, you know your skill set has to keep improving uh, otherwise you'll be in trouble AI is going to take all your jobs. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, okay, what else, guys? Radha, sorry, Sri Radha. Growth, growth, yeah. Anand told everything, huh? Sorry, Prince. Increasing, okay. Ravali? Nothing? Okay. Right. Progressing. Progressing, okay. All right. Yeah, so I think, um, I mean, I, I do this. You have anything to say, Nina? You sure? Okay. Right, so um, you know, it's, it's a, such a simple word, isn't it? And with so many different definitions, with all, uh, you know, accurate examples or explanation of what that simple word growth is, isn't it? But um, it, in the Christian circle, uh, it's very easy for us to overlook certain words. Very, very easy. Uh, in the context of the church, for example, let's say even growth for that matter, um, we use that word so much. We need to grow. We need to grow this ministry. We need to grow. So, but when you take time to put a definition or give a definition of what your understanding of that is, of that word is, slowly the perspective changes, isn't it? Okay. So this is what growth means to him. So this is what growth means to her. Okay. So what can we do to work? Otherwise, okay. Let's grow the church. 
where how why you know um, but, and so our god is a god of growth he starts small he started small and you know from human beings even isn't it uh, and it's something about him he likes to start small and then and then yeah some you know there is a lot of answers for us in life itself so uh, at, at least i teach my music students i used to teach is it's very important you learn to walk before you learn to run like you know because everybody wants to take the guitar start playing fast you know uh, anything piano drums whatever they it's like we're fascinated by the speed and pace isn't it uh, my son looks at me and he says uh, like dada i want to become big i want to become big just like you he doesn't understand the responsibilities and uh, all that that comes with it because something about growing fast or playing anything fast it looks really cool uh, but it's so important to go through that stage isn't it like um are you with me right so going through that process or that uh, pr uh, that progression of growth is so important than to just skipping so that's why this chapter is called the stages of growth is that you take one by one step at a time if you skip anything like jump from one stage to another stage uh, there's a problem right um, so that's what this chapter is all about but before we could do that i want us um, Anand has uh, shared a file with you on WhatsApp, I think so. But uh, where is... I want to just, let me just share something. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, there it is, okay. I just wanted to, uh, because we're going to go through the book of Acts, in, uh, you know, at a huge um, majority of the time, I wanted us to give a timeline. Um, like, and I'm doing this because it, uh, it helps me in understanding the Bible. <laughs> okay, for me, I need to understand, okay, what happened when, you know, that, and so, and once I understand what happened when, things like that, I'll never forget it. Uh, that's how I learn. Um, so I'm trying to share the way I learn and understand the Bible uh, with us. So you can all see the screen, isn't it? Can you all? Okay. Francis, the screen is over there. Or something. Yeah. What is PDF? I have to look at what screen you're talking about. Uh, I am in the early church. No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So uh, this is the timeline of the book of Acts. Um, let's just go through that, that blue thing. It says, the purpose of the study is to illustrate how the young church advanced amidst uh, seasons of struggle and growth. Seasons of struggle and growth during the first century. Okay, this is the first century church. We all know that. We'll set our scope on the period between Jesus' ascension and John the Apostle's death. Acts provides an outline for the first 30 years. We'll lean uh, on the early church and Roman historians to fill in the next 40. Okay, let's move on. Um, so Acts chapter 1 starts off at 30 AD. So what you see, the column to your left, uh, we have different uh, seasons. So the first season, we'll, uh, it's titled as a season of gathering. Okay, Acts chapter 1 is at the year 30 AD. Um, Jesus' death and resurrection, ascension. Okay, Acts chapter 2 happens the, around the same period where we have uh, the, um, what is it? Pentecost. Uh, upper room encounter, uh, the day of the Pentecost. Uh, Pentecost is what? It's a feast of the Pentecost, as they call it, one of the festivals, okay? And the Pentecost uh, is, in Greek, is the 50th. That's what, it's the 50th, that's what it is. So the 50th day of the feast, okay, is, um, and I mean, we can go deep into all those details about the feast and whatnot, the feast of the tabernacles, the feast of the Pentecost, we can study separately, or you must, you would have already learned about it in the New Testament survey or the Old Testament survey. Um, but yeah, so 
we're still there. Acts chapter 2, 120 people are baptized, 3,000 people are added uh, on the first day, and then God adds members to the church every day. Okay. And the map, just have a quick glance at the map. Uh, I love looking at maps. So you see Jerusalem, and then you look at Mesopotamia, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Libya, Egypt, Judea, Arabia. So now you know which direction what is. Rome is the farthest. Okay. Maps are important, guys. Uh, the ancient uh, maps, yeah. So during this time, Tiberius is the emperor of Rome in your third column, okay, Roman Empire. Okay. So let's move on. One year later, 31 AD, act, we go to Acts chapter 3. Peter heals a crippled man in the temple, draws a crowd. Peter and John arrested by Sanhedrin, released the warning. The number of men who believed grew up to 5,000. All right, you guys are with me, right? Okay. I hope you're not getting bored because of all these. Things. Okay. Yeah. So uh, back then, when the early churches formed, that uh, three thousand and five thousand believers are added to the church. Yeah. So, is was it like uh, a Sunday meeting or every day they used to come and break the bread and uh, fellowship? They had fellowship very regularly. Um, so see, one of the things what we need to remember is that what we think of these people. You know, who 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 believed in Jesus? Later we see that, uh, or they were known as the people of the way, right? People of the way. They were not known as Christians until much later. We'll get into that. Um, but we need to remember that the people who were saved were still Jews. That means they still practiced going to the temple, uh, or they would meet in smaller places because of smaller houses, small groups, and it was all big, and that happened very regularly. But and also I think. Their big day was the uh, Saturday, yeah. You know, it's like uh, just before the day before the Sabbath uh, was kind of big for them. So, um, yeah, it was pretty much the same. So, I think Sunday came in much later uh, as their um, so Friday and Saturday. It's, they took their Sabbath very seriously because they will not do anything on the Sabbath day, no? So. Yes. So, uh, I mean, they got they sat and spoke about one day that before Sabbath. Yeah. And they just decided one day after that they used to meet uh, weekly ones like that. Yeah. So that's how this uh, everything came out, right? Correct. Yeah. And they uh, they believed very uh, they believed a lot in the power of community. I think it was. I'm not sure they they even knew of what community was. But they enjoyed that, you know, coming together. Um, see, this idea of discipleship, uh, discipling, and all these uh, small synagogues and all comes from the place of Galilee, right? This uh, methods of discipleship or this idea of discipleship was pioneered from Galilee. And that's why Jesus' kind of headquarters away from Jerusalem was a Capernaum, which is one of the towns in Galilee. Right, he would go there because he saw and he knew that this thing of discipleship was very famous there, like a rabbi taking uh, under, uh, you know, disciples. I mean, there's a lot of lot we can talk about just that, but when we we'll speak about it when we speak about discipleship later. Okay. All right. In uh, AD 32 and 33, uh, we are in Acts chapter four now. Barnabas, uh, Joseph, who's his original name. You know the meaning of Barnabas. That name, Barnabas, was given to him by his friends. It means son of encouragement. Yeah. So can you imagine your friends giving you a nickname? You, I mean, have you had friends call you by your nickname or whatever they want? Um, like, what's that, Francis? <laughs> yeah, I mean, most of the time, it's not great. It's, it's either funny or something to insult you with kind of a thing, right? 
isn't it? But <laughs> but imagine Barn uh, Barnabas, which is his nickname, his original name, his the name that was given to him by his parents, Joseph. It means he he was an individual that was so full of encouragement that he would always encourage anybody who come across his way. And says like, hey, dude, you are always encouraging. So let me just, let us just call you by you know by that title. And so that's hence Barnabas, uh, Ananias and Sapphira lie to the Holy Spirit and they die. <laughs> uh, Jerusalem church meets regularly in Solomon's colonnade. Apostles perform many miracles. Um, more and more believed. Okay, uh, so the church is growing now. Okay, and we are in Acts chapter four, third year. Okay, that's thirty-three A.D. So, and then now 33 and 34, number of disciples was increasing. So, in the title, I'm sorry, in the document, what am I saying? Uh, let's go back to the Acts chapter 1 and 2, okay, the first year. It says baptized, isn't it? Now, baptize, baptism is simply means bring them into, bring them in, okay, or immersing. Baptism of the Holy Spirit or water baptism is what being immersed in the water. Another the, uh, the root meaning of that is to bring them in. Okay, so that is also so as they are bringing in, what is happening? It's they're growing, isn't it? Three thousand people are being added. They are being baptized, isn't it? And then God adds daily. It says there. So you see all the red words is all pointing towards one word called growth. Okay, um, thirty-one. It says they believe that it grew. So growth also points to the expansion in number, right? That's, that's obvious, isn't it? Okay, and, uh, <laughs> and in Acts chapter 4, and always says they were added to their number. And here in Acts chapter 6, the number of disciples was increasing. There's a growth happening, okay? Um, the disciples was increasing because someone was being discipled and someone was discipling. They were not sitting idle, okay? The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased. A large number of Jewish priests believed. Okay, so one very important thing is the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased. Now, I remember Jesus telling, as soon as you receive the Holy Spirit, go out. But until you receive, wait in Jerusalem. So something tells me these guys didn't go out yet. And that now this is what almost four years later. For us, it is two, three chapters. Okay. Uh, but now, so okay, let's move on to the next season, the season of scattering. Okay, so the first season is called the season of gathering. That is from Acts chapter one to Acts chapter six. We can look at it that way. Okay, the season of gathering, and the second season is a season of scattering. Um, oh, good lord. Okay, time is running out. Okay. Um, from Acts chapter 6 and Acts chapter to Acts chapter 8, suddenly they were supposed to go out, but then persecution comes. A uh, main man, hero, and villain at the same time is coming in. Saul arrives. Okay. It's an arrival. Okay. Major fool. Saul, <laughs> okay. Saul arrives in Jerusalem. Some killer music in the background. Okay. Stephen debates the Jews tried by the Sanhedrin, and he's stoned. Saul is there witnessing the stoning of uh, Stephen, one of the deacons, isn't it? Full of the Holy Spirit. Um, he was stoned to death. Uh, Saul unleashes persecution. All except the apostles scatter. So the apostles, the 12 original apostles, remained in Jerusalem. So then it says that all except the apostles scatter. Okay, so forced to scatter by persecution, the church scatters seeds of the gospel everywhere they go. So what should have happened organically after the baptism of the Holy Spirit in chapter 2, what should have happened organically? That means once they received power from on high, they were supposed to go into Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the world. Should have happened organically, but then now it's happening because of the persecution. Are you with me? But... God uses you know anything that comes away to his glory. So uh, so because of the persecution, people are going, apostles, uh, deacons, elders, whatever, they're planting churches, gospel is being spread. Philip of Acts chapter 6, not the disciple, evangelizes in Samaria. Uh, Peter and John go to Samaria to check out the converts. 
Um, so they, Peter and John, they hear about the new believers in Samaria. They go and baptize them in the Holy Spirit. So you read the chapter, it's great. Okay. So now we are in Acts chapter 9. Saul converted. He encounters on the road to Damascus. A um, couple of years ago, I think 2020, we had a youth conference we called On the Road to Damascus. So thanks, Rin. <laughs> So it's like a, a 30 seconds later, it's like, oh, yeah, demaskers, the demasking. Yeah, Saul converted on the road to Damascus. Sorry, Damascus. <laughs> Saul is filled with the Holy Spirit. That's Acts chapter 9. Uh, Saul goes to Arabia for three years. So uh, if you again go back to the map, you know where Arabia is. So you know with which direction Saul went in. Okay. All of that is crucial, guys. Like for us to know which direction he went, you know, he went north or south or east or west. All of that is you'll never know when will, when that information will come in handy. Okay, uh, those online, I hope you all are with me as well. Nina, Prabhu, Shivkumar, Jachin, Anthony. Okay. All right, let's move on. Um, so now, so Acts chapter nine is eight years later, right? That's thirty-eight to the left. You see, that's thirty-eight A.D. So we started at 30 AD, right? OK, so we're still in Acts chapter 9 in 39 AD. Paul pre Saul preaches. Um, Saul gets into action right now. So 40 AD, we are in Acts chapter 10. Peter's vision. Um, we're just going to go a little bit faster now. OK, all right. So let's move on to the next season, the period of organized mission from Acts chapter 12. Uh, so I've shared this PDF with you. Those online, I will share this PDF with you guys. But let's just come down all the way. I'm going to just come down to the last season, season six, the season of John and, uh, and the last apostle. Wait, hold on a second, one second. So there are 28 chapters in the book of Acts, right? 28 chapters in the book of Acts. And now we are here. It's in uh, AD 62. So approximately 32 years of ministry and life is covered in the 28 chapters. Okay. And then, and then a little bit more. Um, it, it's great when you have like, uh, you know, something uh, like a reference point like this do you know what happened when and for how after how many years i mean it, this is this is applicable for uh, any book in the bible that you want to study because at, for us we only have chapters and we don't really think in terms of okay this happened one month later or two months later we don't really know that but uh, so it's very crucial any book you want to take any chapter you want to take the gap between chapter 1 and chapter 2 it's it's kind of important isn't it it, sta it starts from the very first chapter, in the very first verse, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and then the earth was, you know, without form and void, and then verse 3, suddenly something else is there. And even in verse 2, so what happened between verse 1 and verse 2? God only knows that, okay? So I don't want to add anything to God's book, so let's leave it at that. Okay, are you guys with me? Yes? Um, so it's very crucial uh, for us to just understand the timeline, the maps, uh, who was the ruler, everything. I'll just add one uh, side note and we'll move on to the notes. Uh, why is it important to know who the ruler is? Again, in the Old Testament, if you go, uh, depending on who the king was and the region, he set, uh, for example, uh, say 5,000 cubits could mean different in under different king's era reign. Because he said, okay, when you convert it later, for example, let's just take uh, present day for us to understand better. Let's just take one dollar, one US dollar. At the moment, it's about 83 rupees or something. 78? Okay, thanks, Nickel. So Nickel is the king now. So just like that, a king will come and tell it was 83, now it's 78. Just by him saying with the authority of that power of his word, it, that's what it would be. And so, like, it's very important for us to understand, okay, during Noah's time, if it is one qubit, what was the one qubit in his time? Because it can change in another period. Are you with me? 
Okay, so uh, it's the same thing under. Oh, there's a lot of things, guys. Let's just move on. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now let's do a quick. Um, we've gone through the book of Acts. We kind of understand the timeline a little bit. Uh, let's do a, a case study of the early churches. Okay. Uh, this is where I want us to use the mic as well, because we'll go point by point. And uh, towards the end of it, I'd like you to share what, what is there a couple of points that kind of stood out to you uh, as we do this case study. OK, so we'll take the mic and each of us will go through at least three points. We'll read three points and pass the mic on. Is that OK? Yeah, we will start with Prince because the mic is there next to you. And you're only reading what you're giving looks. Yes, please stop. Shall we pray? <laughs> Started by believers who were scattered out of Jerusalem due to persecution. Established through supernatural demonstrations. Wait, which one are you reading? The Jerusalem church? Thanks, Star Prince. <laughs> Case study the Jerusalem church born during the feast of Pentecost started in a powerful way grew very quickly through signs and wonders focus was on small groups meeting in houses and also met together in the temple okay awesome thank you everything in the church was initially handled by the apostles even though there were thousands in the local church deacons were appointed later to handle food administration these deacons also were strong in the spirit and were involved in the ministry. Multiplication came about because of persecution. Initially, the apostles remained in Jerusalem, although other believers and the deacons dispersed. Some of the expansion was directly orchestrated by the Holy Spirit. After some years, the Jerusalem church heard elders who were part of the leadership. Perfect ministry teams were sent from the Jerusalem church to minister to other locations. Seemed to couple with rapid growth initially. Used small group meetings effectively during the rapid growth. Maintained a good balance between might, mighty manifestation and strong teaching to establish believers. <laughs> Established a strong sense of community and sharing of things. Resolved inter eternal conflicts well. Apostles remained in Jerusalem to keep the primary base strong. Apostles and elders resolved doctrinal issues well. Okay. Seemed a little slow to raise up second and third lines of leadership, perhaps too focused on key leadership. Mm. Apostles did not seem to get too involved with new churches directly. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So we. So apostles did not. The last point was apostles did not seem to get too involved with new churches directly. Okay. Um, all right. Some of the key points that stands out stood out to you. What? Use the mic, please. Uh, pass on the mic. Let's be quick to pass the mic on, please. Uh, one of the thing is, uh, uh, there is a rapid growth initially. Right. It's because of this prophetic ministries and all. And uh, the second point, uh, apostles and el elders resolve this doctrinal issues actually. Apostles and elders resolve. La uh, doctrinal issues. Doctrinal issues, well, okay. Last third point. The last third point. Okay. So prophetic ministry teams were sent from Jerusalem. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Jerusalem to minister at the locations. Okay. So what about it kind of stood out? Why, why does that point stand out? So it's, it's, it's a continuation of the second point. Also seemed to cope well with rapid growth initially. I hmm. think uh, after this prophetic ministry and all, uh, maybe there is a growth in this. Uh, church 
like due to this prophetic ministry like healings maybe uh, not just that no it's also signs and wonders everything so prophetic ministry was not just evangelism that happened but uh, see everything being it, one of the points that's a recurring points we see that is god added to the church every day is a is a point that says there was evangelism happening so that's what and in that there was also prophetic ministry so it, it seemed like almost everyone was moving in the prophetic back then because of, they were filled with the holy spirit and there is a lot of uh, like in this uh, Jews and royal, there is a lot of doctrinal differences. Mm -hmm. And after this apostles came, there's actually so many got resolved. I've, I've heard in another class also. Like after this apostles, this, no. there is a, I mean, resolve, resolve, resolve. Of, uh, yeah. doctrinal things and all. It's one of the things. Yeah. So uh, one of the other key points I think uh, that we need to pay attention is uh, it says resolved internal conflicts. Right, so it doesn't just say it resol they resolved internal conflicts. It says they resolved internal conflicts well. It's the key word there as well. Okay, so that means they resolved it with wisdom and understanding and with maturity. So they were as they were, you know, they were as they were growing in number. They were also growing spiritual in spiritual maturity. So they had the wisdom to resolve conflicts. Uh, right, resolving internal conflicts, guys. Let me tell you. Yeah, it's not an easy thing. Okay? <laughs> okay, you can resolve it, but maybe not well. You know. Okay. Uh, anything? Any other points? Can I start for anyone in case study? Speak, speak, speak. Or yeah. Uh, okay. This. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. This point um, where it says uh, seem to cope well with rapid growth initially. Use small group meetings effectively during rapid growth. I mean, they continue to uh, still meet up. Still, in, I mean, it shows that they um, they came together, prayed yeah. together, uh, continued in that in order to strengthen and grow. Even right. though they were uh, increasing or they were growing, but still, they, like internally or spiritually, right. they strengthen each other. And, yeah, yeah. The small groups, uh, it just seemed very powerful uh, and they believed in that a lot and i think i mentioned this in the previous sessions that uh, when they were in the exile with babylonian exile for 70 years because they did not have a common place to meet for worship and because the temple was destroyed they did not know what to do but they wanted but they had to keep this fellowship kind of thing going this worship going and so they would in during the period of exile they started this meeting in small people that's what the historians and the scholars say and, and most of the evidence kind of point to that fact. And so the synagogues and all these small groups, uh, hundreds and hundreds of years later, is uh, the final form of it. Okay, so yeah. Anything else? Okay, Jachin says, uh, sorry, Ravli, she says, uh, points towards maintained a good balance between mighty manifestations and strong teaching to establish believers. Amen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, lovely. the Go point ahead. that stood out for me. One of the point was um, multi multiplication, multiplication, <laughs> multiplication yeah. came about uh, uh, because of persecution. Yeah. So that is very interesting. Uh, yeah. I don't know how it really happened because uh, yeah because people are opposing it so much. It maybe generated a curiosity in the people as well, and also they're seeing a lot of signs and wonders and miracles being happening. Yeah. Day in and day out, uh, through this group of like uh, three thousand and five thousand yeah. believers gathering and stuff. Yeah. So I think this might be related practically when we say this area. I mean this era. What's happening? Yeah. Uh, even the persecution is there, but there is a chance of growth. Yeah, absolutely. I think. Um, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So. And it's not just in this uh, period historically, but then you go through the church history. Uh, let's just take, for example, the Bible, right? The Bible, there are so many people, emperors, leaders who wanted to destroy the Bible. Uh, like uh, one of the Roman uh, leaders, Diocletian or something, he wanted to burn every Bible and on that ashes build a pillar or something. 
um, that's what is another form of persecution. It's it's an own way, right? But then here we are today, right? With different versions and languages. One of it's the only book that's translated the most, the most selling, uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, right? Is the Bible. So I think anytime something about persecution is about when you press, you get the oil out of it, isn't it? So when there's more pressing, more the oil comes out, isn't it? So uh, yeah, it's. Yeah, anything else? And Nina? OK. Just pass the mic to Nina, please. Um, establish a strong sense of community and sharing of things. Like there'll be, even though the people are different play, from different places, but still they have that uh, community, love for each other. Yeah. Maintain. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. OK. So because uh, community in the Jewish culture was big. I, I Please forgive me for sounding very redundant to keep going back saying, OK, community was important, community was important, community was important. But um, but it was really big right? They're in amongst them. Like their community was huge. Like they believed in in the sense of community, being one, being within themselves, uh, all of that, right? Uh, and so because of that, there were two things that was that would happen. One is they would not like the other communities. Samaritans, the Jews did not like them necessarily, it's because there were other community of people, a group of people. But they were like, we are this. We believe in who we are. We know who we are worshiping. We know who our fathers worship. We believe in that. You with me? But. Uh, what happened within that is they would be helpful to each other, isn't it? Um, yeah. And one of the things I studied uh, about discipleship and the culture of the period is, you know, the parables that Jesus used, right? So during that period, there were a huge number of parables, like at, at least 3,000 stories odd. Uh, and so what Jesus did is he would take the one of the parables that existed back in the time, and then he would change one key uh, point in the parable. So let's take the parable of the what's this, uh, prodigal son. Uh, is in, the, in its original story, uh, the father does not go and receive his son. Why? Because his greatest sin of the, the prodigal son, the greatest sin according to the original text, it says, is that not that he took his father's thing, but the fact that he left his people, his, he left his community and went. So that was considered to be so anyone who left their community was considered to be a big sin and they were not accepted back. And so when the or when the son comes back, in the original story it says the father would be weeping, but he would not go to receive his son, and everybody around him would say, You did the right thing to the father. But Jesus would take that key element and would change it and irritate every other Jew Jewish people. <laughs> right? And so uh, and and that's the beauty of it is they took community seriously. Uh, it was very big, and it's no accident we see that you know in in the case study that community was important. The small groups was all important and whatnot. Okay, so uh, all right, uh, out of time. We'll stop here and uh, we'll continue in the next session from where we left off. Okay, great. We're still in page one. Okay, all right. Uh, we'll stop and we'll come back after the break. Thanks, guys.